Welcome to the Filipino American Women Project, a podcast show that shares stories and life lessons told by individuals living or have lived in America that are of Filipino descent and identify as female. I'm your host, Jen Amos, a fellow Filipino American woman, and I'm excited for you to join us. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Jen Amos here. I am so excited to introduce to you a good friend of mine that was introduced to me by a local friend in San Diego. She is an inspirational influencer, two-time cancer survivor, and a global traveler. Jamie Wins, welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, Jen? I'm so happy to be talking to you today. As always, I mean, I love being on your Facebook Live, so this is no different. I think I'm just ecstatic that we're doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I agree. I feel like um, it's just so crazy because I, so I, I met, like I mentioned, uh, Jamie and I were introduced to each other by a local friend in San Diego. I'm not there anymore. Obviously, I'm here in Virginia. But when we connected, it was instant chemistry. Uh, she just has this you know, lust and adventure for life. And she is a young spirit. And she has a lot, a lot to share. And so why don't we just kind of ju- uh, jump into it, Jamie, and I would love for people to hear your story. So, so we had a, actually about a year ago, just a little background, a year ago, I did interview Jamie. And I remember one of the first things uh, she asked me was, what do you consider a Filipino American woman? Uh, because Jamie is actually uh, from the Philippines, as a, I believe, as a first immigrant, uh, first Im- what do, what do they call that? First generation immigrant, right? Where like yeah. you, yeah, mm-hmm. you came directly uh, from the Philippines, and so you were asking mm-hmm. me like, can I be on the show? And uh, I tell people that I I qualify Filipino American women as individuals who live or have lived in America and identify as uh, female. Hey everyone, Jen here. Just wanted to cut in the middle. I also forgot to add that we qualify individuals living or have lived in America who identify as female and are of Filipino descent. Okay, let's jump right back in. And so Jamie, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about about your background, um, you know, your prior life before being in America today and and why you identify as a Filipino American woman today? Sure. Well, I am born and raised in the Philippines, so I am Filipino in a lot of ways, but the thing is, I was taught in the American education in the Philippines, even back home, so I grew up kind of having both cultures, living in the Philippines, but having an American education and getting immersed with the Filipino-American community in the Philippines, and just in general with, like, having friends who, because, you know, I think I just... I've always been fascinated with, you know, America and Americans just because, you know, that's the TV show I watch and the movies I watch and the Mm. books I read. And so I've always been, you know, curious. So every time there's a a Filipino-American group in the Philippines, I always kind of try to join in, which sometimes made me feel awkward back home because they're like, you know, she's not really from America, but, you know, she kind of sounds American. But I don't know, like, I'm, I'm like this weird girl who's like, she sounds American. She knows a lot about American, but she's never been to America. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I, you know, that's, that's what kind of made me like a little bit of a weird mix in a good way. Mm-hmm. And um, so back in the Philippines, I was, I was in the media industry. I was doing modeling before uh, I did TV. So I did commercial modeling, which jump started to events, hosting. And then I had my own TV game show back home. Mm. And... I turned 30 years old and I just had this experience of just wanting to explore the world. I felt like the world has so much to offer and I want to see what's out there. And so I did the whole quit your job, pack your bags and travel the world thing. And I started with Australia. I lived there for a year and a half. I was studying communications and media and doing bartending on the sides and also doing some retail on the weekends. I was just doing what college students in America would normally do because I think I never experienced that in the Philippines I'm like I've always been curious how it's like to you know to to study in a first world country and do you know to be a student uh part-time student part-time working uh I mean yeah working student 
so I experienced that in Australia and then the visa expired and I still wasn't done. So I moved to Spain Mm -hmm. and was an English teacher, a second language there for four years. And there's always long weekends in Spain. So I was just traveling all the time during, you know, during down, down days and any opportunity I have, I just take the, the rent fade to the nearest city close by and just explore for two or three days and take cheap flights everywhere. So I was just, you know, exploring Europe and teaching English a second language and doing a little bit of commercial work as well for Spain. And then I decided to move to America four years ago. And I've been here when I started to come here, I was just more like, I'm just curious again, what because I've, I've always been the curious soul. See, my mind yeah. is very curious. I'm a wanderlust. So I said like, oh, might as well try what, what's, it, what's it like in America, you know? So I went here, uh, did hospitality industry in the beginning, just because it was the first job that took me here in San Diego. And from there, I, I thought I had, I had it all together. I thought like, oh, I'm just going to climb the career ladder in the hotel industry or a restaurant or something like that. But I got diagnosed with early stage breast cancer on 2017. And mm did the whole I mean actually it was 2016 but I did the whole treatment on 2008-17 so that that year was dedicated for my treatment for early stage breast cancer and 2018 was kind of like the emotional and physical recovery because I was a little bit you know of course it, it had that effect on me I was a little depressed and I was worried and I felt weak from all the treatments so I was recovering 2018 mm-hmm. and slowly trans- transitioning to the real world but 2019 uh just early this year i had an early recurrence and i'm now on uh treatment again but not as aggressive as my first one so it's just hormone therapy and i am just very blessed that the treatment is responding very well according to my last scans it's showing shrinkage and it's just doing well so now this is my third chance at life and I just can't shut up because I have to talk about life about (laughs) inspiring people I mean you know what I mean like shit man I'm just given the third chance at life what am I gonna do just sit down I can't so now I'm like oh god I have to do video blogs I have to you know do Instagram I have to just get interviewed not because I want fame but because I think I need to preach that guys oh my god just enjoy your life this Mm -hmm. is it you know, you'll never know. You'll never know when cancer is going to come or when, I don't know, death is going to come. It's just very random now. So now I'm just like all about preaching how to appreciate life and just just enjoy and live in the moment. It's so true. It's not cliche. So this is my story right now. Now I'm all passionate about just living and just enjoying each and every second that you're here and you get to experience things you know s- simple things like eating food or just sleeping well or I don't know just talking to people having fun with your loved ones it's, it's those little things now it's not really about the big things anymore so yeah this is where I'm at <laughs> Jamie I love it and I've I've just loved your journey um you know, before I met you and then when I met you and where you're at today. And if there's anything, any common theme since I've known you for as long as I've known you, which is, I think, a good, I don't know, a year, less than two years <laughs> at this yes. point, you're just very optimistic. And, uh, you know, you you know how to turn, um, what do they say? They turn, you know how to turn lemonade out of lemons. And uh, yes. I just... That's that's why I knew that I had to interview on the show because you know there there are uh, some Filipino women who feel like they don't have a story to share or they they need someone such as yourself who is exuberant and excited and and saying like hey don't just sit there get up and and do something and enjoy your life because you only have one of it this is your only chance to live it. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, for people that are listening to this, they'll feel extremely motivated. Uh, I hear you, you know, the way you talk is very normal for me. But even so, it's it's always very like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited because I'm because it's Jamie. <laughs> and she's <laughs> making me excited just the way the way that she's talking. And so I, I love just everything that's been I mean, even even with what you're go- currently going through, I love that you still have an optimistic look on things and you're still, you know, living your best life. 
I, I do want to circle back to um, your formal life in the Philippines. And you mentioned that you, you know, you were a celebrity and a, f- a former TV game show host. And I, um, I don't, I don't think we met, you mentioned that in your story just now, but I, I'd love for you to share, you know, at 30, why did you decide to drop all that? Like you were very, you were very successful, you know, you were, you were doing really well and you decided to just drop it all and travel the world. Because I think people, I mean, when you're young, you just think that fame and money is everything. We all go through that phase. And I was there. I really wanted to prove something to the world that mm-hmm. I'm, I can be somebody. I can, I can achieve my dreams because I've always wanted to be famous. You know, I've always wanted to be, I think it started when I was young and I always watched beauty pageants and I know I'm, I'm not tall enough to join it. Mm-hmm. So I, I felt like I needed to do something else that will make me land a spot on TV or in the media that doesn't involve pageantry. And so I have always been the one to punch the walls. Like, you know, because even when I was doing modeling, I wasn't the trend in the Philippines. They wanted the the mixed look, like Filipino Australian, the half white, half Asian was the thing during my time. And I, I look very, very Filipino, very Asian. Mm, mm-hmm. And so I, I had to try harder, you know, I had to really like develop my camera skills and my walking skills on the runway for the teen teen fashion shows because I've always been that kind of girl that you know I want to impress people not in a sense that I want to make them happy but I want to say that hey even if I'm not the stereotype or I'm not the what is in demand or I'm not tall enough or whatever I'm still going to make it so I've always been that overachiever person and I think when I got the game show in the Philippines it was my own game show and, you know, no co-hosting or whatever. And I really carved, you know, curved a, a spot in the midnight slot for that yeah. show, which, which was mine. It's called Games Update Live. And by the way, people, if you're listening and you want to Google me up, my former celebrity name was Jamie Joaquin. So I changed it because the Jamie Wins is my blogger name. It's a self-reinforcement because of my cancer diagnosis. I want to remind myself that each and every day I am winning. It doesn't matter if it's a little win, such as getting up in the morning and doing my job and making people smile and doing my blog and stuff like that. But my former celebrity name was Jamie Joaquin. And so when I, when I became successful in that midnight show, I was on my way. I think it was just a jump start. I was going to keep going and be one of the mainstream hosts back in the Philippines. But I think what triggered me to stop is I felt like, I don't know, the, the fame and the money and the, the power just intimidated me. Maybe, it, maybe it's not as, just because, you know, I, I agree with what Spider-Man said, you know, great power, with great power comes great responsibility. I felt like, wait, wait, I think, you know, now I believe when people say be careful with what you wish for, because I felt like when I was there, I just felt that pressure to, to be perfect, to look good, to always smile at people I can't have a bad day especially in the Philippines they really worship you when you're a celebrity it's a big wow. deal like they really look at you they really like ask for your picture they just always ask you about your your life and they check out what you're wearing head to toe you know like the people yeah. are just like all eyes are on you and that's how I felt I felt caged I felt like hey I can't I can't breathe anymore I can't I can't just go out and buy milk. I, I, I need to like get dressed just to, you know, pick up something in the laundry or laundry mat or something like that. I just yeah. felt like there was no freedom. And I think when you're young, you feel like that's freedom. You feel like, hey, if I get the money and the power, I can do whatever I want. But it's the, I think, well, in my case, it just didn't feel like that. I felt like people owned me because in the Philippines, it's more people power than the artist power during my time. Now it's changing yeah. Because of social media, it's the artists who have the control. But my time, you, you please your audience. So your audience can call the shots. So, you know, whatever they want, like they want you to have long hair. They want you to be skinny and fair skin. So you got to like fit in, you know. So that's how I felt. I felt like I, I didn't want to be like this because I, I've, I, you know, I want to be Jamie. I want to be who I am, you know. So right. I think the only way I could achieve a reset or like that freedom that I was looking for was living in a foreign country where no one knows me. So I, I just did the impulsive thing of, you know, jumping to Australia because when I was doing TV in the Philippines, every time I had an opportunity, I was traveling by myself as well for like two weeks just to, 
you know, decompress and to, to reboot. And then I come back and do the game show. So that, that was my life. And in Australia, I just felt really, really in love in that city. I just wanted to, I mean, in Sydney in particular, I really loved that city. And I said, like, I want to live here even just for a while. And so when I finally had the, enough funds and got to just do it, I, I jumped and that's where it started. And I, I think I got spoiled living in Australia because I felt that freedom that I was looking for. It's like, wow, yeah. no one knows me. I see myself. I can get dark. No one tells me to get lighter. No one tells me what to say, who to date. You know, it's just, wow, this is just so free. And after that, that's where I I didn't want to come back. That's why I kept traveling. I kept jumping because I experienced that, like, the freedom of just being simple and yet you're happy, you know? Yeah. It's, 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 it's hard to explain because it's like I, coming from being a celebrity where, you know, you have all the the means, you know, because I was making good money, I have all my sponsors, I get free dermatology treatments and all these free clothes and all that. It was fun. But I think when I lived the simple life, it was it was liberating because I didn't I realized like I didn't really need a lot of things. I just I'm just happy with experiences. You know, I'm just happy having a few things but quality and you know, having people like me because they just think I'm I'm a good person, but not because I'm famous. You know, like it it's humbling. It's I I felt like a human. I'm I'm not like I don't know some Barbie doll on display or something. Yeah, so definitely. I think that that's the that's the that's the trigger. It's like no, there's there's beauty in simplicity, and people need to to reach the fame and money first. I think before they go back to it because. I'm, I'm sure there are people listening out there who wouldn't agree with me and think, no, we all want to be rich and famous. Of course we do. I mean, I did. Yeah. So, yeah, like, it's hard. Like, once you're there, you'll, you'll see it. But it's hard to, to know it without trying it. So I still don't discourage people to go for their dreams. Like, it's still good to go there. But, yes, like, once you get there, you'll realize, like, oh, now, you're, now you'll know why people just retire and they're okay being simple retired it's just just because they've, they've already done it and then they're good yeah yeah i um i think i think that's awesome that you went through that experience and um yeah just like what you said there's a lot of people uh that would be like gosh i wish i was famous cuz i'd have it all but um you know fast forward to today i know that your life is completely different from your you know your life in the philippines and even after traveling I know that you you take a lot of pride in being a minimalist and appreciating the little things. So why don't we just fast forward now to today and what your life looks like? I know you're working as a librarian and I think you work at a yoga studio. studio. Uh, so why don't we talk a little bit about that now? Yeah, so in America, I am doing part-time work as a library assistant, which I really love because I love books and I love being a public servant. It humbles me down. And I think growing up in the Philippines where having library access that's a good library entails expensive tuition fee for college or for university. So I am so amazed at the library in America that it's so nice and complete and it's public, <laughs> you know, I, it's so shallow. But to me, it's like, oh, my God, in the Philippines, even my university doesn't have a library this great. And it's like one of the best highly universities but in wow. America your public library is so good and so accurate so I am I feel like I went to free college right now I think that's why I love um, working in the library I, I've, I've been borrowing books all the time I'm browsing at different things and it's free education to me it's just mm-hmm. a good resource for so many things and on the side I also do uh, yoga cleaning because I, I want to save on my membership so helping clean the studio gives me that privilege and on the other uh, part I'm building my name as an inspirational influencer just because that's the platform where I would really love to share my story to anyone who might need some inspiration and upliftment and empowerment when they're going through really shitty times and um, it's something I'm currently building right now which is doing really good so those are the three I'm juggling but yeah so far, it's, it's been good. I mean, the, the social media can, can sometimes be consuming and frustrating, but it, it's, it's my passion. So I think I'm trying to do it more for like for the love of it and for the fulfillment of it more than um, profit. 
Yeah, so, yeah. Or even the vanity of it. You know, I know it's I know yeah. it's easy to post something and every second you're checking how many likes you got or how many people have seen your stories. Like it's easy to get lost in that, right? <laughs> yes. I mean people always say you shouldn't check it, it shouldn't matter, but oh my god, of course we're humans. We we, we can't help but check. It's just it's just the way it is, I guess. We just you know, we just want to know how we're doing. It's, it's like a feedback thing. All right. Jenny was here jumping into the middle of our show, as I always do, to remind you why this show is possible. So, you know, at the end of every episode, I tend to say, if you didn't catch our guest contact info, don't worry, we'll have those in the show notes. Check them out. I work so hard on them. You're welcome. Well, it's been brought to my attention that our show notes are not as easy to find as I thought. Which is why, starting summer 2020, the Filipino American Woman Project is proud to be partnering with Captivate, the world's only growth oriented podcast host. Captivate is created for independent podcasters, designed from day one to help you to focus on audience growth and the expansion of your audio influence. One way that Captivate makes our lives easier as independent podcasters is by taking the guesswork out of making a website for your show. That's right, a website for your show. So listeners, starting summer 2020, finding our show notes will be so much easier. All thanks to Captivate. You're welcome, as always. If you're about to start podcasting or are getting burnt out from all the extra work of producing one, like building a website, consider a seven-day free trial, that's right, free, with Captivate by visiting thephilamwoman.com. That's the philam, short for Filipino American, woman.com. Or, you know, check out our show notes in the meantime, which is in the details section of each episode. Once again, you can visit thefillonwoman.com or visit the details section of this episode. Yeah, I, I think it's affirming. And, you know, for someone in, in my position right now who uh, is, is fairly new to the East Coast and doesn't have any local friends yet, you know, having access to social media is really just my way of, of really having a social life and, and doing podcasting as well and, and doing these interviews because it's like, okay, cool, like this, it's it's easier for me to find my tribe online, where if I try to find a, a tribe in person, I have to drive around, I have to like, you know, be consistent, I have to go to, lo- you know, like uh, weekly socials or, or meetups and try to maintain that relationship. And it can really be a financial investment to make local friends where, you know, with social media, (laughs) with social media, for one, it's, it's free. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, you know, there's, it's a double-edged sword. Like, you know, there's privacy issues all the time when it comes to social media, but you know, it is a, yeah, it is free. And, you know, I can put hashtag Filipina or hashtag Filipino American, and I can find, you know, Filipinos everywhere you know, all over the US and, and the world, and just from my phone, you know, or just from my computer. And I, I didn't have to change out of my clothes to make that happen. You know, I didn't have to, you know, dress up nice, I didn't have to jump in the car, I just had to turn on my computer and make sure I had internet. <laughs> and, and before you know it, I'm able to connect with the world. And so and so I think I think like social media is, it's, it's, it is a double edged sword. But like when but it does. It ha- the reason why we do it is because it does have benefits. Like you do feel connected. You do get that validation. Um, and 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 most importantly, just what, what you've been talking about this whole time. You get to inspire people. You get to be. Uh, you know. You get to share your story, and 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 it hopes to touch other people's lives. And that's that's amazing for social media. Uh, a little a, a little bit about what you mentioned earlier. You know, you think about how celebrities used to be treated, just like what you were saying. And now because social media is available, um, celebrities are so much, they're, they're humanized so much more. And I feel like fans and followers have so much more empathy for celebrities and artists, especially if they're very vulnerable about, you know, let's say, because, you know, depression is a, is a big thing a- everywhere. And there's a lot of celebrities who've come out saying like, oh, I have depression, I have anxiety. Uh, and, and, and just being able to use their own platform on social media to share that is is really inspiring so so yeah i love i love it all i love everything that you're doing with your life and and your life sounds a lot simpler and quieter uh than it had been before and i do i do um recall uh past conversations we've had and just catching up that sometimes you feel like you're not doing enough (laughs) and and i always talk to you about like how you need to do less right (laughs) yes because i think it's it's a 
an American thing. Since I moved to America, I feel like everybody's thriving, everybody's doing things. And me, I just, I just feel like, oh my God, I'm not really achieving a lot. But you're right. Sometimes I just need to remind myself that, hey, it's fine. You're fine. You know, like you don't, you don't need a lot of things. You know, you're, you're, you're okay. Like respect your own pace, Jamie. Like you know, each person has its own, their own pace and achievement. So relax. You know, because. I remember one time I was going on a hike with a bunch of American friends, right? Mm-hmm. And they were all they were they were all talking about their goals, and they said like, okay, so what are you manifesting for this week? What are you know your the goals you're gonna achieve? And then, you know, this this other girl said, I am gonna post this big deal of this and this dollars. You know, I'm gonna own it and you know post that deal for sure. And then yeah. this other girl said, yeah, I'm gonna buy this apartment and uh, start a family and na na na. And then this other girl is like, yeah, I'm going to get this client to sign up with me. And then this other girl is like, I'm going to open my business and crush it. And then they looked at me and said, well, what's your goal, Jamie? I'm like, um, I'm going to do yoga and <laughs> stay alive and write my blog and shoot my video. And I'm just looking at them like, oh my God, I feel like a loser compared to these girls who are like, yeah, business, family, yeah, quota, and get this, I don't know, woohoo, you know, like big, you know, make big changes, bam, bam, bam. And me, I'm like, I'm just going to do yoga and do my my, my blogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't even mention any numbers. Like, I'm not hitting any quota or any amount or, I don't know, closing any client. I don't know. I'm just like, I just want to stay alive, you know, like that's right. all I want to and, and then they just looked up and they're all quiet like oh that's good you know like you were happy for you like I can tell that they're just like trying to cheer me up but I'm like but I felt really kind of like oh my god I sound so Filipino like it's so it's so typical for Asian and Europeans to just like just live life la dolce vita la 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 se la vie you know like not really about the money and the figures and the achievements it's just you know live day to day yeah but yeah it's just yeah I have to remind myself that okay Jamie relax like don't try to run the rat race. You're good. Yeah. You're good. Yeah, exactly. So, I was, I was going to like, um, I agree with you. I, I think, I think sometimes, um, you know, depending on what groups you're around with social groups, sometimes you can feel like that only person is like, yeah, I, I'm definitely not like up to speed with everyone else. I'm not up to par, but you know, I think everyone, everyone has different seasons, right. And different stages in their life. And there's sometimes, you know, just like your former life in the Philippines, it was very, you know, go, go, go where now you're, oh, you're yeah. you slowed down and you already know what it's like to live that life. And maybe these women, this is the first time they've ever really felt so busy or, or they're, you know, it's just, it's just their different a different season for them where they feel like they have to be really ambitious and they have to hit certain milestones in their life. And, you know, that's just them and that's okay. Just like where you're at, like where you're at is completely okay as well. Yes. Seasons. It's called seasons. I feel like, you know, maybe it's my, my fall and my winter right now or something and other women, it's their summer. So they got to just keep going and I can't compare it. I say, why am I not there? Because I was, you know, I was in the Philippines. I was you know, the go-getter, the achiever. And then I did the whole travel the world thing. And now I'm just kind of on this chill mode and I just want to document stuff and share my thoughts, my my art, my um, ideas. So it's, yeah, it's just, it's just really different in, in the season of life. I agree. Yeah. And honestly, I, I would prefer to have a chill life like yours. I, I mean, I want to be uh, driven by inspiration, not, you know, competition or the, de- you know, the desire to reach certain milestones. I kind of just want to hang out and be like, oh, that sounds like a great idea and do something with it. <laughs> like, that's I think, true, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but you know, art comes from so many different, um, art comes from so many different, like, uh, types of motivation. And so, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, I just, I'm just uh, saying that it's, it's great that you're in a place where you're in a way taking it easy or really just uh, doing things that you enjoy and focusing on yourself and, and using your, your collection of stories in your life to share to the public and through social media. I think it's, it's really awesome. Thanks. So ben. I do. And I mean, sometimes I feel, I mean, I'll be honest completely that I would love to hopefully make more money. I mean, not, not big money, but you know, right now, 
working part-time in the library and still building the social media. Of course, I'm not really making a lot right now, but it's fine. Like, I'm, I'm okay. It's not my priority, but it would be so nice to eventually at least kind of make more just so I could, I don't have to, like, worry about finances in the long run. Yeah. So that would be, like, maybe my next goal. But right now, it's, I'm still good. I'm still good in terms of, like, my savings and everything. I'm still able to to sustain my lifestyle so it's not so bad and I'm, I'm okay I'm a very simple woman like I, I yeah. can be happy with, with very minimal things as long as I have my good food I'm all good good food and good rest <laughs> and I can make my art and I have my friends to talk to I think that's all I'm just I'm, I'm simple now I'm very easy I love it you know I a couple weeks ago or some time ago I heard this really awesome quote that has stuck with me since I've heard it <laughs> and it says something like God never he never gives you a dream that's within your budget. It's always going to be something that is out of your budget, right? And so when I heard that, it it really reassured me that no matter what I'm doing in life, it doesn't matter what my finances will look like because if if it's in front of me, if it's something that I desire, if it's something that I want, I know that God is going to give it to me one way or the other, even if it's not the way that I actually want it. And he always provides, you know, and so, so something like that, where, you know, having that in mind, it, it just, yeah, you, you could just be happy with where you're at. And if you do have a goal, just know that um, even if you don't know how exactly to get there, that's the fun part, right? Is figuring out what yeah. resources, what connections, what part-time hustle, you know, part-time jobs or side hustles you need to get to that goal. And that's, that's what makes it fun. <laughs> That's so, true. That's true. Yeah. Well, I want to go ahead and jump to uh, really my favorite part of the interview. Our final question, really. <laughs> you know, with everything that you said, you um, you mentioned in your uh, interview questions that you know one thing you learned about life is that it's very unpredictable and random. Uh, therefore, it's just important to be grateful every second you're alive and breathing. So, I'd love for you to elaborate on that. And also share if there's a particular story or a specific milestone or experience in your life that led you to, you know, really just be grateful and be grateful for every second you're alive and breathing. Yes, because I noticed that first world country problems are very, I'm not saying it's shallow, but sometimes I feel like people focus too much on the little things and make a big problem out of it when there's actually not much of a problem Mm -hmm. and this is where the inspiration comes in where I feel like people should focus more on the fact that they have a like I'm just speaking in behalf of like living in America as compared to living in a developing country like the Philippines there's so much here you know so see even the library I'm just so in awe with the library it's like wow they have big library and they have good access and and all these things and I think Americans take it for granted you know, even when I was living in Spain, it's Spain, the Spanish people take Spain for granted. And to me, I was looking at everything and I was just taking pictures of everything because, wow, cathedral, wow, art, wow. I'm just like, wow, 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 everywhere. And then all these people just complain about, I don't know, the, they lost football or something. It's just like, oh, come on. You know, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> sometimes it takes someone from a fresh perspective like me to remind everyone how good you have it, you know? And I think people are just so blinded and maybe so spoiled, you know? So so immune to, like, the goodness that they have that they don't appreciate it anymore. And I think, like, in my experience coming here in America and being so blessed to have good access to medical care, I'm with UCSD as my medical team, and they're amazing. And, you know, just coming from when I was doing my chemotherapy after chemo I can just like go to the beach for a while and chill and I'm just like oh this is so great imagine if I did this in in Manila where it's just traffic and there's no beach Mm. and polluted and you know and oh my god like I don't know if I can manage the stress along with my treatments you know but here you know in San Diego there's just this beautiful perfect weather almost every day and you know there's barely traffic and so so to me it's like I think I would love to remind people listening that you know that each situation has a pro and con, but you can always look at the pro and and just appreciate that, you know, because I remember in the Philippines, I used to complain a lot about people are always just to, to, because in the Philippines, it's it's a very tribal culture. So we love to be in each other's business all the time. Like, are you okay? Have you eaten? Do you want to eat? And sometimes overwhelming. Sometimes I'm like, I want to be left alone. Like, can you just (laughs) 
stop asking about my life, stop offering me food, stop like nosing about my business. It's yeah. all in my it's all in my face. I hate it. Fuck you all. Like leave me alone. <laughs> and then I come to America and I'm just like now I miss it because I'm like I wish I didn't complain back back home too much because America's very individualistic and yes. it's different. So now I'm like I miss the attention. I miss people just checking on me all the time. I miss you know getting into this tribe and eating together and you know and just staying until midnight singing karaoke you know so see like you you, you you just need a little bit of a change of perspective to appreciate what you have and and me like living in america experiencing cancer here really made me see how how great it is to to have access to a filipino american community because i get the the love and care from the filipinos filipinos here and the the community here and i get the advanced treatment and the professionalism and the efficiency of the american system mm-hmm. so so see i now i see the best of both and i just don't complain anymore you know like i don't see the negative of america or negative of the philippines i'm like whatever i i just i just see the best in both and make the most of it so yeah i think people should just see that you know like even in simple things because what when i had my second diagnosis it was a combination it was combined with this annoying dry cough for six months that i've had and didn't go away yeah and so i had a hard time talking and along with that came depression because i'm like oh my god i have this cough that's undiagnosed and won't go away and i had a second cancer diagnosis and i have this depression and anxiety so I really thought like, okay, okay, this is it. My life sucks. This is it, people. I'm just, you know, I'm useless now and I'm just going to go down, down and die and whatever. I was just in this horrible state of mind and I thought there's no way out. And, you know, I I just had to day by day appreciate what I have. I'm just like, okay, I, I can still see. I can still feel. I can walk. I can still eat. So I don't think about talking because I couldn't talk because of the cough and so see, I had to force myself into looking at like, okay, I have eyes, I can listen, I can mm. still feel, I can still eat, I can walk, I can, I can still do my library job. It doesn't require a lot of talking. So I can still write because I can't do my video blogs at that time. That's why my, my videos went kind of um, stagnant. I couldn't like keep, keep up with uploading videos because I couldn't talk properly because of the cough. So mm. see, I had to, it, it made me see those things because of the circumstances and now that my cough disappeared and my cancer is kind of like responding to the treatment very well now i'm like okay wow it's so good to talk now i'm really going to use my voice to talk and connect with people and now i'm not going to waste my time i'm just going to be very resourceful i'm going to take very very good care of my body i'm going to sleep if i need to sleep see it's like i had to experience all these shit you know before i i i see how great i have it and now i'm just not ever ever gonna take life for granted and yeah. the gifts I have right now like literally I wake up in the morning and I move my hands I'm like okay my hands are moving I can see I can smell I can talk I can taste I have feet I can walk all right yay we're good you know like <laughs> great I'm just like that now like I'm not even thinking about money or I'm just like okay body parts are complete I'm walking I woke up it's good I'm yep like, yay you know it's just good so yeah so I think people should really just be very, very, very grateful to be alive because it's a privilege. It's not given to everybody. Some people get cut short. Some people lose body parts. Some people, like my case, have cancer where even if it's being controlled, it's still a constant reminder in my head that, you know, it could just end at any time. So I have to enjoy life and, you know, so do people, you know, no, don't ever stress about little things anymore and just just be with your loved ones, do what you love, be happy and take care of yourself and, and just appreciate everything. That, that's all there is because it's a gift. Life is a gift. It's, it's something that needs to, to be experienced and not just go through it. It's not, it's not just like, oh, I'm just going to eat to stay alive. No, like appreciate each and every bite. It's, mm-hmm. it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So, yeah. Yeah, I I love everything you said, Jamie. In fact, um, a lot of things that you said, like, oh, I have even saying I woke up today, you know, I can see like I have vision, like my eyesight's horrible, but I have glasses so I can see, you know, I have yeah. I have I have clean water that I can drink. I have my own private bathroom because I know what it's like to share bathrooms, you know, for myself too. I, I like to, I like to count my blessings when I first wake up. And even, even when things get really difficult, 
and I'm feeling really down, one of the first things I try to do, or one of the first things, the way that I react when I'm feeling really down is I try to find something to do. I'll say like, oh, well, I could get up, I could, you know, walk to the other room, I can get a cup of water, I can go outside for a walk with my dog. And, you know, I, I try not to, I think it's good to validate your feelings if you need to complain about something or you need to vent, right? But you don't have to, you, you shouldn't stay there, like deal, deal with it the way that you need to deal with it, whether it's talking to a friend or, you know, reading a self help book or going to therapy, or whatever you need to do. But the point is, is to not sit on that, you know, it's not to dwell on whatever you're dissatisfied, dis- dissatisfied about, because life truly is a gift. And it we, we didn't choose, you know, we were given this life, we, you know, we are in debt to being alive and we should appreciate it. And so I, I just love everything that you said. And, that, and I hope, you know, for our listeners, it's a, it's a good reminder to appreciate the little things like, oh, I have uh, two feet and I have 10 toes. And if it wasn't for those 10 toes, I wouldn't be able to stand up correctly. <laughs> you know, just little things like that. And I, I love how you said that. And I appreciate that. And I hope, I hope that our listeners appreciate that as well. And if anyone does feel compelled to saying anything or want to add to this conversation, uh, feel free to leave us a message. We have our show no- in our show notes, you'll, you can learn how to leave a voice message in which we can play in a future episode where we might bring Jamie back if we have uh, callers. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so if any of Jamie's story really resonated with you, uh, we'd love to hear from you and love to, whether you uh, leave us a voice message or email us, Uh, We'd love to hear how this episode has impacted you in any way. So with that said, uh, Jamie, do you have any closing thoughts before we wrap up? Yes, I am currently on a mission to live long, win strong, and stay fab. And I hope (laughs) that I can inspire you guys along the way as I go through this journey of mine, because this is not just done for me, it's for other people. I would love to just be a good influence to people going through hard times and chronic diseases or adjusting in a new country and, you know, finding your, your life. I'm about to hit midlife right now. So I'm still in this whole transition period. There's so much transitions happening in my life from patient to person, from being in my, I call it like my woman child, I'm turning into a midlifer. So it's like oh, so many things. <laughs> But, you know, this, that's my goal. And hopefully I get to inspire, uplift, and empower anybody out there with my stories and my sharings and my art. So, yes, let's keep winning. Jamie wins and so can you. And I want to thank you, Jamie, for taking the time to chat with me before your big, your big day, your birthday. I know you've been doing this amazing countdown on your Instagram. And if anyone is interested in following her, you could find her on Jamie underscore wins. Jamie is spelled J-A-Y-M-E-E and then underscore wins like you're winning. <laughs> and uh, yes. Jamie, uh, Jamie is very transparent about her life. So if you're just looking for daily inspiration or you want to, you know, you want to get inspiration from a real person who's very open about her life and everything and, and you, you need that, definitely check her out. You could also visit her website, jamiewins.com. And if you want to co- if you want to contact her, her email is also really easy. It's just jamiewins at gmail.com. So with that said, Jamie, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you and I appreciate our friendship. And I am excited to continue following your journey. And uh, hopefully when if we have uh, some callers, we would love to have you on another time uh, to address our callers and if they have any questions or comments that they want to share with you. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. I'd love that. That would be great. I would be very, very happy. And thanks again for inviting me for this podcast, Jen, you know how I always love, I love chatting with you, whether on cam, off cam podcast, off podcast, whatever. I'm, I'm just <laughs> here for you. You know, that girl, you know, that, you know, we've always had crazy conversations and, you know, I, I feel like even if I'm, about to turn 40 and you're this young woman I just feel like I connect with you in so many levels I just it's insane I can see you for like a whole day so it's great connecting with you I'm really glad we we met and we're still in this friendship together (laughs) yes yeah even though we are coast apart 
it feels like we're in each other's backyard still and it just makes me really happy and social media really makes the world feel so much smaller so all right jamie thank you so much thank you to our listeners and we will talk to you all next time in the next episode take care bye guys thanks for listening and there you have it everyone thank you so much for listening Please subscribe if you'd like to hear more stories and life lessons told by the Filipino American woman. If you're interested in sharing your story, please contact us at the Filipino American woman at gmail.com or find us on Instagram at the Filipino American woman. Until next time.